If you're building or running a business or even considering starting one, there's some business metrics that really do set you up for success. We call these key performance indicators. Now there's really three KPIs that I use in my businesses, we're standing in one right now, that sets you up to thrive. See, most businesses just survive and we wanna thrive. So if you use these key performance indicators, the three KPIs, put them to work, you will see the profitability in your business grow. Let's get into it. Key performance indicator number one is your labor to turnover ratio. This is such a crucial KPI because in most companies, the biggest cost a business has are its people, its staff, and you need to be tracking it religiously. Because if you spend too much, you go bust, and if you spend too little, you'll see your customer service dampen down and people not come back to your business. Now, we're sitting in one of my businesses right now. This is an ice cream parlor. I track it every single day and I don't want my labor spend to be more than 20% of our turnover. So if we bring in a thousand pounds worth of sales, we're spending 200 pounds on labor, leaving the rest of the turnover to pay for the rest of the business and hopefully make some profit. That's the aim here after all. You wanna get the Goldilocks approach to business, not spend too much, be too hot, and not to spend too little, be too cold. You want it to be just right so that your customers keep coming back, your team are not overstretched and overworked, and that your business works like a beautiful system. See, it varies for industry to industry. Whilst I've mentioned hospitality and leisure here at 20%, retail might be 13%. The care industry, like for day nurseries, for example, they're another business that I own. We spend 50% of our turnover on labor. And you need to be tracking all this stuff to just go terribly wrong if you're not tracking it on a daily basis. Now, the guys at Amex have created the Business Trends and Insights Hub, and there's specifically a whole article on how to work out your labor to turnover ratio in your business. It goes one step further because they've created more resources and more articles on all other facets of business. There's a link in the video description. Go and check it out. Let's get on to KPI number two. Monthly profit and loss. This is the second KPI that I want you to be tracking in your business, and I want you to get really good at it. See, some people call these monthly P&Ls, or monthly management accounts. And I actually prefer monthly management accounts because that's what they are. They're a set of accounts that are helping you manage the business in a much shorter period, the month, compared to the year. And that's what most people do. They manage their business or their big decisions by the year-end accounts that their accountants have prepared for them. Really, you want to use your accountant for that big long-term planning and tax planning. What you want to be is on the numbers yourself with a monthly profit and loss. And this is easier than ever before. There are so many really good value accountancy software systems that you can access on your smartphone, that you can access on your tablet or your big desktop computer so that you can really understand where your business is at. When you look at your monthly profit and loss, you want to put all your income in and then all your costs so you can work out your margins and your gross profit. Maybe you're like me and you sit on lots and lots of stock. Well, that needs to go into your profit and loss so you can understand your gross profits and your margins so that you're not relying on stock valuations at the end of the year. And what's really good about management accounts, it allows you to compare periods. So if you've got a set of accounts of January, February, March, April month and every month of the year, you can compare to last month and the same period to last year to see how your business is doing. Now, let me be absolutely clear with you. Big businesses are doing this, but small businesses should be doing it as well because it just makes you better as a business owner. Here's the thing, I absolutely believe this and I've seen so many business owners do this and including my own experience. Once you track your monthly profit and loss, your business just becomes more profitable because you become better because you're on the numbers. So let's summarize this. Don't manage your business by what cash is in the bank account. That's what most business owners do. If the cash in the bank account is good, the business must be doing well. Manage it on a monthly basis. Don't rely on those year-end accounts. On that cash balance in the bank account, think about this. If you're a business and you get loads of prepayments, you can have a really healthy bank account, but that doesn't actually mean you've made profit this month. You're just relying on prepayments to keep the business going. That's a classic example why monthly profit and loss can really help you navigate your business better. KPI number three that you should be tracking in your business is your average customer value. 
or your ACV. Now, I'm standing in our bakery right now, that's why I'm dressed like this, which is part of our food service business. And we're tracking our average customer value more than any other metric in this business. Why? Because we understand that if we increase our average customer value, therefore we increase the profitability of the customer more than spending marketing money to go out and get more customers by just growing our turnover and revenue. Most businesses are tracking growing their turnover, growing their revenue, but you need to spend marketing money to grow that far better to get your existing customers to spend a little bit more from you. And how you do this is you look at two other factors. So we've got average customer value, but we've also got this one, average transactional value. How often are customers buying from us? In this business, people are buying from us every week. And then we've got average lifetime value. In a B2B business, that's a business to business business where you're selling to trade, I look at it as a 10 year plan because most people that are buying from us in the bakery, they've been buying from us for years. So in this example, I'm gonna use 10 years as the average lifetime value. So we've got average customer value, how much you're spending when you buy from us, average transactional value, how often you're buying from us, and lifetime value. What is the lifetime value of a customer? It's important that we understand lifetime value because in some instances, people might only buy from you once a lifetime, sometimes every two or three years, sometimes every week, like a supermarket would be weekly. Going to a theme park might be once every five years. That's why we wanna track average lifetime value as well. So let's put a working example in our bakery. Say someone buys something from us for a pound and they're coming every single week of the year. That's 52 times. And they're buying from us over that 10 year period. We now know that the customer is worth 520 pounds as a lifetime value. We now know how much we can spend to acquire more customers and how much each customer is worth. That's why we track ACV. Let's do a working example again. This is a donut. What's the average customer value of a donut? 50p, a pound, one pound 50. The donut's also highly commoditized, sold in shops and supermarkets, and everyone sort of knows the price of a plain donut. How can you, as a business, increase your average customer value if you're selling donuts? Well, here's what we do. We sell donuts, but they're highly decorated. They look like you want to take pictures of them and put them on social media. And because they're highly decorated, we can increase the average customer value. Yeah, sure, there's a bit more cost and labor that goes into making it look like this, but it far outweighs in terms of profit to increase the average customer value by spending a bit more on becoming an experience-based product. It goes one step further than that because when people do this stuff and they eat it and they like it and they taste it and they think it's great, they transact with you more and they tell their friends and you build a brand and then when you build a brand, you increase average lifetime value. So that's how we increase our profits by tracking our average customer value here in our bakery business. If you've liked this video, great news because there's more videos in a playlist designed to help grow your business. So go and check that out here on the YouTube channel. And whilst you're here, make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in future videos to help grow your business.